Hello. Today is Wednesday, November the 6th, 2019, and uh, it's about uh, 10.30 my time. Uh, it's day after Election Day in most states, uh, my home state of Kentucky, where I am, uh, we had election and uh, interesting um, political season here in the Bluegrass State. Um, I think it's still yet to be concluded because uh, there might be some protests in the governor's race with concern of the vote count, but uh, I think overall it was interesting. Uh, we had a third party candidate run uh, for governor. A uh, man named Hicks, uh, he ran as a libertarian candidate. Uh, didn't really know all that much about him until a few days ago, uh, but he struck me as an interesting uh, candidate for governor. Uh, he had a running mate, a young lady named Curran, I think was her name. Um, and then there was another libertarian that ran for one of the down-ballot races uh, here in the state. Uh, between Mr. Hicks and the other Libertarian candidate, I think they garnered about 30,000 votes total, which is pretty good for third-party candidate when you consider the fact that there's 7 million people uh, statewide here in Kentucky. We have a 7 million population with the majority in city of Louisville and Jefferson County, uh, the Louisville metro area. But um, I think that's pretty good for a vote total statewide for high office like governor uh, and um, state auditor. Um, they uh, did a pretty good showing for them. I voted a uh, straight Republican ticket this year simply for the fact that I thought the Republicans were doing a good job and had been doing a good job. I support them. I support Matt Bevan. Uh, even though I am a Democrat, um, but uh, I was impressed with the Bashir and Coleman campaign uh, ticket. Uh, I thought they ran a good campaign. Uh, could get negative at times. There were a lot of uh, attack ads this year, uh, especially from outside uh, groups and interest, uh, political packs. Um, basically, a lot of Citizens United uh folks uh, coming in, Grover Norquist, um, I think too there were some George Soros funded uh, groups that ran some attack ads uh, here against Bevan and then Bevan he ran attack ads against Bashir. Um, neither one of them would debate the Libertarian candidate. I don't even think they gave him the time of day to be totally honest with you but Bevan is crying sour grapes because the Libertarian candidate was there and they were regarded as a spoiler, uh, a protest vote, if you will, and uh, he was upset with the vote totals and because it was so close. Uh, I think had there not been a third party involved, third party candidate involved with this race, it probably would have been a different outcome. Um, Personally, I think it's good to have that. Uh, it keeps both sides, both the Democrat and Republican, uh, accountable, in my opinion. Uh, other folks may feel differently about it, but to me, you know, it keeps folks accountable. Uh, so I think it was a good thing. But Bevan is crying a lot of sour grapes. Um, you know, his people, his outside interests... Uh, are crying a lot of sour grapes because there was third party candidate. Uh, so I think with the close race, as close as it was, and as far as the vote totals are concerned, they're still, they're really still officially counting. Uh, even though they've technically called it for this year, they're still counting votes here in Kentucky. So uh, I think it's going to be a couple of weeks before it's actually a certified done deal. And then, you know, too, they got to allow for any protests as far as court filings, canvassing, uh, recounts, that type thing. So I think it would be actually be a couple weeks before it's, you know, legitimately certified and a done deal. Um, 
and uh, if it goes well, uh, if there's no additional votes in favor of Bevan and uh, his running mate, Alvarado, uh, <clears throat> I think Bashir will go ahead and officially be sworn in as our next governor here. Um, I thought it was interesting, too, Bevan is having a spat with his lieutenant governor, Janine Hampton. Remember that name, Janine Hampton. I encourage everybody who's watching this video and who's going to watch this video to Google search her. Janine Hampton, to my mind, is a rising star in Kentucky politics. This young lady is from Bowling Green. Uh, her and her husband and family, they're from Bowling Green, Kentucky, Warren County. Uh, Bowling Green is the home, if you don't know, is the home of Corvette. Uh, the Corvette plant and the Corvette Museum, um, number one place in the world for manufacturing Corvettes. And if you like Corvettes, it's top notch. But um, they come from Bowling Green, Kentucky, Warren County, Kentucky. And uh, she is a crackerjack lady. A uh, world-class crackerjack lady, a veteran, Air Force veteran. Her and her husband were in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, they uh, are good people, Christian people. Um, I have no qualms or quarrels or regrets with her whatsoever. But her and Bevan are having a dispute, apparently, uh, during his tenure, he fired uh, two of her people in her office without any kind of prior knowledge, say-so, consent, you know, hey, can you inform me before you do this? Nothing. Uh, his people in his office just up and fired him for what they said publicly was incompetence. I don't believe that because Janine Hampton is not an incompetent person, and I don't believe that she would intentionally, knowingly or unknowingly, hire incompetent people to work in the lieutenant governor's office for the state of Kentucky. Yeah, it's the lieutenant governor's office, and, you know, lieutenant governor is like, the vice president and the vice president is like the presidency warm is vice presidency is like a warm bucket of spit basically uh, was infamously infamously said by uh, John Adams John Adams called it uh, like being vice president like a warm bucket of spit um, and that's basically what it amounts to but is still a high office you're the president of the Senate, you're in charge of the Senate, especially at the state level. The lieutenant governor is in charge of the Senate. Uh, they're the presiding officer over the Senate. Yeah, it's a quote-unquote uh, title in name only, whatever, but it's still a title, you know. And you're not just sitting around twiddling your thumbs. Um, I think personally, Janine Hampton and her team got a raw deal by uh, Bevan and company. Um, she is currently suing Bevan and going through the process of filing complaints with the Kentucky Cabinet on personnel, the personnel cabinet. Um, they are filing complaints, lodging complaints. I don't know that she'll necessarily be successful, but the lawsuit and the publicity behind it has made some waves and has ruffled some feathers. And to be real honest with you, I think Bevan's feathers need to be ruffled on this. Um, he's screwing his uh, running mate, the lady that he came into office with, um, the lady that has stood by him when everybody else is cut and run in regards to this pension mess here in the state of Kentucky, which is still a mess. I don't care what anybody says, it's still screwed up here. 
It's been screwed up for a long time. It's not just a quote-unquote Republican or Democrat issue. It's an issue, period. And it's been that way for a long time. Uh, the other thing was the teachers' strike, the teachers' union strike, uh, the statewide strike for public school teachers. Uh, I got nothing against teachers. We got good teachers here. They work hard. They play by the rules. They do their job, you know. Um, but it's the management. It's the leadership. And with that, Bevan, as far as I'm concerned, I'm in agreement with him on that. Um, the leadership sucks, okay? It stinks to high heaven. And what's the point in having a union if all you're going to do is just line your shop steward and your union boss's pockets and not get no representation? What What's the point in having a union if that's all it's good for? So that, I think, was the problem and is the problem. And it's where Bevan had a problem was with the union leadership, but a lot of people wanted to make it out like he was cussing teachers out and threatening teachers and telling teachers that if they left school that, you know, some child might be raped or whatever. You know, that, yeah, you know, I, I don't necessarily know that I would have chosen those kind of words, but, you know, still I see his point in that uh, as far as the union leadership is concerned. It sucks. Um and they need new leadership, in my opinion. But I'm not a teacher. I'm not involved with the union. I don't have anything to do with it. I don't know anybody necessarily who is. But I pay attention to it. And hell's bells, I pay tax dollars too. And so I'm a concerned citizen about it. Um, but, you know, it's just it's a lot of crap, you know. Just don't believe the hype, you know. They came here screaming and screeching in Frankfurt uh, with their parades and their rallies and their marches and, you know, up in the Capitol Rotunda screaming and shouting and carrying on and beating and banging on the governor's door and, you know, all that crap. It's just a bunch of crap. Getting people stirred up, getting people riled up over nonsensical, non-sequitur BS, you know? So, I, I just don't get that, and I don't jive with it anyway. But, um, back to my point, as far as Hampton is concerned, Janine Hampton is top shelf. And I have a feeling, a very strong feeling, that we're going to hear from that young lady again real soon. Regardless of how the lawsuit shakes out, regardless of, you know, Bevan ultimately leaving office in December when Bashir is sworn in, if he is sworn in officially, uh, you know, we're, we're going to hear from her. And so I encourage you, you all to look her up and pay very, very close attention to her. Yeah, she's a Republican, whatever. But it don't matter. She's top shelf. And I think she's getting and her people are getting a raw deal. Uh, so I would pay close attention to her and, and watch, watch this space, as Rachel Maddow likes to say. Um, but it was an interesting race. It has been an interesting race. Um, I was really impressed with the Attorney General race. I thought that was a good race. I think Mr. Cameron, the uh, Attorney General-elect, is going to be a good Attorney General. Um, the guy he ran against, Greg Stumbo, bless his soul, um, scale 1 to 10, 10 being best, 1 being worse, I give him a 5, and that's being generous. Um, Greg Stumbo is is like a used car salesman to me. Um, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Um, but he's been in Kentucky politics for a long time. 
you know, ran the state house, the general assembly for a long time as the speaker of the state house. Uh, he and uh, Jody Richards, another guy um, that is used car salesman personified, not to insult used car salesman, but he just sleazy and slimy and no earthly good. Um, and he wanted to talk a lot about Mr. Cameron and about, you know, his being a corporate lawyer or whatever. Please, okay, spare me, all right? Um, and in the end, Mr. Cameron got almost 800,000 votes total. Uh, and he beat all comers as far as vote totals were concerned for one race, for one office. Um, I, I think he's top shelf too. Um, I know a lot of people are making fun of Trump because he basically gave him a shout out and all that on Twitter or whatever. But to me, it's deserved and that's somebody else to pay attention to and watch. Um, you know, the only other thing really, uh, in my neck of the woods here in Kentucky, we had, um, a race for, uh, Supreme Court Justice, State Supreme Court Justice between a Kentucky State Senator named Westerfield from here in East, or Western Kentucky, Whitney Westerfield was his name, uh, against another guy that I really liked, my family liked too. Uh, and he's a judge in the Court of Appeals for the state, the State Court of Appeals. His name is Shane Nickel. Uh, we voted for him, but really liked Mr. Westerfield, too. But I've known Shane Nickel for a long time. My family has, and Shane Nickel is top shelf. Uh, and he ultimately won the race. Um and so he'll be sworn in in December as the next associate uh, justice for the Kentucky State Supreme Court. But he's replacing another crackerjack individual, a Judge Bill Cunningham, uh, who I think a lot of. Uh, good guy, solid guy, uh, you know, calls the balls and strikes, calls it like he saw it, uh, didn't pull any punches. And one way or another, up or down, straight or flush, you got justice with Judge Bill Cunningham. Um, but he wanted to retire. He wanted to call it a career. And so Mr. Nickel and Mr. Westerfield stepped up. Uh, it was supposed to be a nonpartisan race, but Nickel is a Democrat and Westerfield's a Republican. And, and that went with the Democrats. Uh, I think he's going to be a good judge. He is a good judge. Um, and I think he's going to represent this area as far as Western Kentucky and the judiciary for the state of Kentucky. I think he'll represent it well. Um, and that was about all that I can think of, really. Um, looking forward to 2020 and the McConnell and McGrath race. That's going to be the big one. Um, all intents and purposes, I think McConnell's going home back home to Louisville, to be honest with you. Um, he's got a lot of making up to do. Um, I know he, quote-unquote, brings home the bacon and that he thinks, him and his wife, the Transportation Secretary, Elaine Chow, McConnell, Chow Chow, we call her here, uh, you know, think a little butter, a little ham, a little egg, you know, a little handshake, a little kissy on the cheek, whatever, get some votes. Yeah, it's got them votes for a long time, but I think a lot of people are fed up, and I uh, think uh, it may be time to, you know, send Mr. McConnell packing. Uh, in that case, the Democrat, Amy McGrath, who I'm pretty solidly for, uh, I don't see much at all wrong with her. Uh, solid person, good person, a veteran, uh, somebody who seems to care about the people and is interested in the people and helping people. Um, 
you know, I wish she really and truly lived in western Kentucky and not in Lexington and Louisville and Frankfurt, the quote-unquote golden triangle that they call it here. And by the way, as a side note, the city of Louisville where the Kentucky Derby is held is not the center of the universe when it comes to the state of Kentucky. There is more to the state of Kentucky than the city of Louisville and Jefferson County. God bless the people of Jefferson County, the people of Louisville. Don't think the world wrong with those people. They're my people. I'm a Kentuckian. I've been a Kentuckian. Be a Kentuckian. But, you know, all the time on the news, Louisville, Louisville, Louisville. We're here in Louisville to cover today's election. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay? Louisville is not the be-all to end-all for the state of Kentucky. There's more to it. There's Louisville, there's Lexington, there's Frankfurt, there's Hopkinsville, there's Bowling Green, there's Owensboro, there's Paducah where I am, there's Fort Campbell, there's Fort Knox. Fort Knox is supposedly where all the gold in the world is held. I don't know. Anyhow, there's more to it than just Louisville. Oh, Louisville. Oh, Kentucky Derby. Ooh, ooh. Please, okay? Spare me, all right? Get out once in a while, okay? It's a great big world out here past Louisville. Louisville seems to be the only place that everybody in the world can come to and make sense of the bluegrass state. Oh, we got to go to Louisville. we got to go to Louisville, 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 Louisville. Where's the news feed? Where's the cable news feed for Louisville? Ooh. Please, okay?